Wulong Fallen Dynasty, a new Souls-like or rather Neo-like action RPG made by Tim Ninja and Koi Tecmo Games, has been out for nearly a week now and is already claimed by many to be the worst PC release of 2023. Also, it's mostly negative on Steam. What are the Steam people so mad about? Hi friends, my name is Melvin and today we're checking out Wulong Fallen Dynasty. We'll talk about the good and the bad. There's plenty of both actually. Check the video out, it might just save you $60. Also it's spoiler free. Also like and subscribe, it goes a long way. Thank you. Just a quick reminder, in this video we're talking mainly about the PC version of the game, so be aware. Most of the issues listed in this video are not applicable to the console version. Here's a brief description of Wulong Fallen Dynasty for you to have an idea. You create your own character. This thing doesn't make any sense. Props to the devs for implementing a really good character creation. You can create whoever you like, from anime looking superheroes to dubious freaks that stink through the screen. You can also create a woman with stash and change your pronouns. Then you watch a cutscene and start playing. The maps in Wulong are not interconnected. Instead, you explore the area, unlock a few shortcuts, then fight a boss, watch a cutscene, and move on to another location. Quite enjoying it. What is going on? So yeah, if you're expecting like full-on exploration and open world, it's not here. Which is okay, in my opinion. Whatever Wulong has to offer in the exploration department works just fine. For bonfires, you have flags, so if you fall, you get resurrected by a flag last rested at. While roaming around the area, you collect loot and fight enemies. Which brings us to the next chapter of the video. Combat. People are comparing Wulong Fallen Dynasty to Neo games and Sekiro. I, to my shame, haven't played any Neo games, although I will in the near future. But when it comes to comparing it to Sekiro, well, yeah, it has similarities. Even the banner on Steam looks heavily inspired by Sekiro. But mostly the deflection mechanics. All the combat in Wulong is tied to deflecting. You can deflect anything. There's no skill trees, no weapon mastery systems here. Instead, there are wizardries. The more you invest in one of your stats, they're called virtues here, the more wizardries you unlock. Although some of them are quite satisfying to use, I think the wizardry system lacks polish. And I just ended up using the buffs only. You let me know what you think about the wizardry system in the comments. There are also martial arts, they are skills unique for every weapon, but they do so little damage I just use them for aesthetics. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, I don't know. But what really makes Wulong combat good is the deflection mechanic. To deflect an enemy attack you simply hit dodge. Yeah, it's tied to the same button as dodge. Not block, although blocking is present too, just not that useful. If successful, you hear the satisfying cling sound and have a window to perform a counter-attack. Sometimes the enemies charge up a critical blow that, if deflected properly, gives you an opportunity for an insta-kill. It's super fun to learn enemy patterns and combo chains deflecting their attacks. It makes you feel badass. When it comes to stealth, unfortunately it lacks variety. You either come up to an enemy from behind and one-tap them with one single blow or perform a plunge attack. Well, I just wish there were more options. But long story short, combat, good. To top up the new mechanics mentioned above, there's a morale system. The higher your morale is, the stronger you are. Upon death, your morale drops down to zero, unless you raise a fortitude flag. That kind of locks it for you at a certain level. So the more flags you find, the more morale you'll be able to lock safely. It sounds interesting and encourages you to properly explore the area. Grinding levels won't do here. There's also co-op that works like ass. You are weirdly desynced with your companion that results in them stuttering and teleporting all over the place. It works fine for some people, but it doesn't for me. You can also summon NPCs to aid you in battle, but their AI is, well, really bad. And they serve merely as distractions when you fight a boss. Also, sometimes when you perfectly deflect a critical blow and about to insta-kill an enemy, they decide to attack, completely stealing your opportunity. Dicks. Loot system here is a bit tedious. You get lots of armor pieces and weapons you end up just getting rid of. I can see that this system might be appealing to some and it's similar to the one in Neo by the looks of it but I just ended up equipping the items with higher stats and selling the rest. There's one thing that really annoys me and I wasn't sure where to put it. Tutorials. Yes. They can be disabled and sometimes take a good portion of your screen and when you die they don't go away. It's incredibly pissy, man. I mean, there should be an option to disable them. Or maybe there is, but I still can't find it. Visually, the game looks, well, dated. You are looking at it right now. 
If you crave for incredible graphics, you won't find it here. Some textures are low res. It overall feels like a game from a PlayStation 3 era. Is it bad? I don't think so. Could it be better? Well, sure. Is the way it looks a problem? Not to me. I don't mind data graphics when the gameplay loop delivers and is satisfying. Tons of sriracha coming out of the enemies look so goofy though. So, audio. It's good. Weapons clang sound is satisfying. I'm playing with a Chinese voiceover for more immersion. Also because the English version in my opinion is just not that good. Music is quite forgettable except for Zhuyan fight music. I'll definitely remember that, though I've already heard it somewhere. Story is pretty straightforward, nothing new. You are the chosen one, yada yada, go save the world. The story is being delivered via cutscenes and vague item descriptions, but there's no feel of the lore being deep like it is in, let's say, Elden Ring. Here you will find just an okay story. Nothing more, nothing less. Performance is the main reason why people are mad. It's not too bad for me, I'm getting 60 to 120 FPS most of the time. Although sometimes it tanks hard and I'm getting massive drops, especially when there's a lot of particles. A lot of people claim it's unplayable, but it works okay for me. Though it definitely needs a patch and needs it ASAP. FPS drops and stuttering in a difficult game is just UNACCEPTABLE! Although it's a no-brainer, the game is ported to PC from console and is ported poorly. This is how it's probably been ported. Mouse and keyboard support is non-existent. It feels like you have a rock tied to your camera when you try to move it around. I personally think that these games are supposed to be played with a controller, it's just better this way, but I can't see why a lot of people are mad that a PC game is not supported with the main means of control on PC, mouse and keyboard. Like I said earlier, I haven't played Neo games, but people say that both Neo games have decent mouse and keyboard support, so I think it will be fixed in Wulong as well. When it comes to crashes, I only had one during the stream and I'm 20 hours in. Mostly negative reviews, let's see just crashed <laughs> a very very good investment graphics settings are much to be desired no dlss support although it says in their faq on the website that they are planning to add it in later patches the game fps can be 30 60 and 120 fps locked and you can choose between the fps mode that looks really bad and resolution mode that looks well better also there's an issue with the settings restoring back to default after you restart the game Jank. Here are some final thoughts. Wulong Fallen Dynasty is not a flop, but it's not a masterpiece either. It's raw and it has its jank, a non-existent mouse and keyboard support, dated graphics and sometimes boring level design. Again, I haven't played Neo 1 and 2, Team Ninja's other games, but I have a list of games I unintentionally compare Wulong Fallen Dynasty to in terms of, well, everything. I pre-ordered Wulong when it was $20 plus, now it's $59.99 and I think it's too high for what it is, at least right now, at least on PC. Good thing there is a free demo available, so you can check it out yourself first, at least to see how well it runs on your PC. All things considered, Wulong Fallen Dynasty is cool. I really like it and I will be playing it for some time. Should you buy it? I'll say it again, $60 is a bit too high of a price. So buy it only if you're itch for a new arcade Souls-like, Neo-like action RPG is unbearable. Just be aware that the PC version has issues with FPS, it has some visual artifacts, settings restoring back to default from time to time. If you're on PlayStation or Xbox, you're safe though. For PC players, the safest way is to wait for the patch. I really hope it's coming, because mostly negative seems a bit harsh, even for what it is right now. It's not perfect, but it's also not utter shite. Whatever your decision is, be aware that the comment section in Steam is a fucking cringe fest, so be mindful and protect your sanity at all costs. So here we have it. I gave you some pros and cons and personal opinions. And what is your experience with Wulong Fallen Dynasty? Have you played it already? Are you planning to? You let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I post two new videos every week. Thanks for watching and see ya! videos.
Well, that sucked. 